I just remember the shots going off, man. Both these dudes are standing in front of the black beamer letting off. And one of the dudes had two hammers. He letting off with both joints in front of the black beamer. We booking by this time. But Eighty nine ninety last had to be go go night with Red Essence at the Metro Club. It might have been Dino's by now. You know our clubs be sometime after they have, they have a few a few violent altercations or a few murders. They try to switch the name up. Facts. It was the Metro Club when it first opened, and uh, remember I said the nigga who owned it, nigga name was Breeze, older nigga Jerry Curl pushing a Corvette back then. <laughs> Matter of fact, he was my cousin's baby mother's godfather. So, you know, some nights we get a little, a little extra privilege, you know, walk right in, we had to stand in line outside. Mm. And, uh, but that didn't, you know, just once in a blue moon. But but this particular night, it was a Thursday night, man. Thursday night, it, 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 definitely with Essence. Definitely with Essence. Now let me set a little stage for you last night with the, the go-go culture. And I'm quite sure it's some of the all clubs, you know, New York, wherever you at. But, but like in the go-go coach, you know when it's letting out, especially if you got a nice whip or whatever, car period, you just, we used to just ride in front of the club. Like you just keep riding up and down, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Riding up in front of the club, go up, turn around, come back down, keep doing it, trying to, you know, maybe trying to pick you something up, pick a female up or something, you know. That was part of that go-go culture, man, back then. And uh, I remember this particular night, we coming out, me and my man Sloan together this particular night. That's the dude in that picture on the on the, on the the first video we did, sitting in the white Serac sweatsuit, sitting on the front of the bins. Matter of fact, it was his bins. And um, my man Sloan, I ain't seen him in a long time, hope he's doing well. And uh, we coming out the joint, you know, Mad, mad crowded, you know what I'm saying? Mad crowded, you know, of course, cars all out in front of the joint, you know, broads everywhere. And, uh, you know, we stand like, kind of like, you know, in front of the club, but off to the side, of course, you know, just mingling. And uh, now where, where the uh, Metro Club is at, it sits on, I believe this is Bladensburg Road. Yeah, it sits on Bladensburg Road. And it's one of those streets, lads, they got like a concrete medium, you know, a narrow concrete medium coming down the middle of the street. You got two lanes going east, you got two lanes going back, you know, south. You feel me? Mm. So dudes, as you know, cars is moving in front of the club. You know, you got two lanes moving, moving in front of the club. You got two lanes in the opposite, moving in the opposite direction. And, you know, in front of the club. So me and my man, we come out again, mad crazy, mad cars. We standing around for a minute, but <laughs> it's one of them nights again, you thank God that, you know, you could have caught a straight because I wish my man Sloan was here because he can verify every word. We talked about this shit for years. Cause the minute we go to step off like, and just being, again, being the way I was raised last by certain dudes, I was always taught to survey your surroundings. You know about that. You know what I'm saying? You know, especially coming from the open, the open, the open air market crack era. You know, when we used to stand out in parking lots, you know, hand to hand, you know, you, you always practice surveying your, your, you know, your surroundings. So we, again, we in front of the club, me and my man Sloan, we could, you know, we park out, park our little buckets or whatever. We just drive. We park in the cut. That's another little back then of the go-go culture. Niggas used to, you know, bust up in niggas' cars looking for hammers. You know what I'm saying? So you always want to try to hide your joint, but you didn't want to park too far. But you know what I'm saying? But you want to have your joint somewhere. The nigga bust up in it. You know, you, well, you don't see your joint. But niggas used to do that back then, man. Busting up in niggas' cars looking for hammers on go-go nights. Mm. But uh, again, we standing in front of the joint, lads, you know, and then, you know, we just chilling, mingling. Next thing you know, my man Sloan, like, let's step V. So again, we crossing the street. We crossing Bladensburg Road. Again, mad cars. You know how the car be moving slow. Sometimes, you know, 
all the cars are stopped. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just traffic. So as we, as we walking across the street, I noticed it's a black BMW. Probably was a, one of them, it was a big four-door joint. Probably was like one of them, was it back then, the 780s or the 740s, the 740i's or what was it, the 560? I don't mean, I'm not good with the, with the numbers, with the cars, lads. You know, I just, I like what I like. You know, I, I don't even be paying attention to numbers. Mm. And, uh, but it was one of them four-door joints, the long version. And it was two dudes sitting up in the joint. It was two dudes, but me and my man Sloan, you know, we weaving through the cars to get to the other side of Bladesburg Road. We walked behind the BM. As we walking behind the BM, you know, I'm looking at the joint. I see the dude sitting in the passenger seat. He got on like a black level. I, you know, the driver, I couldn't really, I ain't paid much attention to him. Again, we walk behind the BM. As I'm, as we walking behind the BM, I'm just kind of looking to my right. I see two dudes walking like in the middle of the street, like that's like in between the car. I know I wasn't the only one that saw them. Now my man Sloan didn't see him because he's walking in front of me. But as I look to my right, I see two dudes like just walking, you know, down the middle of the street. But when I look at them, I'm like, hold up. These niggas is up to something. They just, you know, they had that look. One dude kind of like had his, you know, both hands in his jacket. It might have been, I don't think it was wintertime. Might have been fall, you know, it wasn't, wasn't cold, cold, but it was definitely jacket, light level, you know. Because like I said, I know we had on jackets in the, I remember the dude in the black beamer, he had on a black level. This this was, was like the, the Paley Paley era. You know, the black level, you know, the level era. Mm-hmm. So as I'm walking behind the BM again, I see the two dudes walking up. So I'm getting past the beam. We we crossing to the next side of the street, kind of weaving through traffic. And I look back again, and lads, the dude, both dudes pulled out. And I probably 10 feet from these niggas, 10, 15 tops, tops, 10, 15 feet. I see both dudes pull out. As I see these niggas pulling out, mind you, my man Sloan is probably two, three feet in front of you. I'm like, oh shit, I'm like, Sloan. And I just, you know, you jack. And I, I remember I kind of pushed him in the back, but we still, we, we didn't, we not across the other side of the street. I just remember the shots going off, lad. Both these dudes are standing in front of the black beamer letting off. And one of the dudes had two hammers. He letting off with both joints in front of the black beamer. We booking by this time, but you know how we are. We still, I'm still looking back. Cause by this time, when the shots started running off, we started running. So we get to the other side of the street, the sidewalk. And for those who know, if any DC niggas hear this, back then, I don't know if it's still there, but the Metro bus parking lot set across from Dino's or the Metro Club. It's, it's right, they, they face off with each other. It's a big parking lot, but it's a gate right there, of course. Big, tall gate. Because I remember a couple of dudes, when the shots ran off, people were running. One dude, he tripped on the sidewalk and he like stumbled into the fence. You know what I'm saying? I remember seeing him stumble into the fence but we book it. But I'm looking back, and I can't. Two dudes in front of the beam, the last, both of them let off. It was a quick maybe, you know, maybe 10 to 15, I ain't gonna say that many shots, but I know a good 12, maybe 15, 12 to 15 shots, it was so many shots. And as I'm looking back, well, I hear the car. So I'm saying, I guess the driver, which he did, he hit the accelerator, but he made the left going back towards New York Avenue, because New York Avenue and Bladensburg cross. DC niggas, Merlin niggas will know what I'm saying when they hear that. So he bucks a left, he does a U-turn land over the concrete medium. Mind you, he had the BBSs on the Beamer, so the tires immediately bust, at least two to three of them bust. But dude, he bucks a U, mad smoke, you know, mad smoke. He went over the medium, and now he's falling back down Bladensburg Road. And for those who know, again, Bladensburg and New York Cross, it's a McDonald's 
in a gas station that used to sit right there. I don't know if the Mac, it might be still there. I believe it is. He's heading back toward Bladensburg Road. I mean, New York Avenue. Oh, I guess he got pulled over or the police, or he might have stopped, I don't know. Because by the time we got down there, it was a couple of police cars that stopped him right there in that parking lot where the gas station and the McDonald's is at. Because I remember it used to be, it's a, it's a pay, it used to be a pay phone right there. I remember that pay phone. It used to be a pay phone right there. But he got pulled over. You know, the, I don't know if the police stopped him, I don't know what happened. So by, t- by the time me and Sloan, you know, we had got to the car, jumped in the car. Of course, you know how it was back then, lad. You niggas want to see what's going on, see what happened. So we pulls down there. It's mad car, a lot of people are out, you know what I'm saying? So we like pull over like in the gas station. Like we walk over, we want to see what's going on. See, because the driver didn't get hit, man. The driver of the car, the, of the Beamer, he didn't get hit. I don't know how, but he might, he might not have been the target. Because I remember the driver of the Beamer, he was outside the car going crazy, you know, fussing with the police. No, let me get to the hospital, let me get to the hospital. But his man is hit up. His man is hit up, man. You know what I'm saying? I remember, you know, walking around, you know, they, you know the police was trying to, you know, they ain't put no yellow tape or nothing up yet. You know, they just trying to keep people back. But we like looking, of course. And I remember last this ain't the first time I, I seen a brother take his last breath. I remember, man, he was slumped on the driver's side and like he, he was breathing, but you could see his chest, it would go up and it would come down real slow. It would go up, and it would come down even slower. And I remember his man was going ballistic. And he definitely, you know, that's your man, that's somebody you fuck with, you care about, you know what I'm saying? So his man, he was crying and everything, he was going ballistic. But for some reason, the police, it was like, man, you know, I, I don't I don't even remember. I'm quite, they, I'm quite sure they probably called the ambulance, but I just didn't understand why they didn't like, you know, try to get the man to the hospital or whatever. But for whatever reason, they didn't last. And I remember Slim said right there, man, he died. And I remember when he took his last breath, his man, of course, must have seen it. A couple of girls were standing there. They screaming and hollering. But once he, once he took his last breath, man, it was like people went ballistic, man. One girl like fell out. I don't you know, she might have knew the dude, I don't know, but I just remember she like fell out on the concrete. Like just fell out, yo, like she, like she might have passed out. You know what I'm saying? But his man was going ballistic, like he's dying, he's dying, y'all, y'all. He was just crying, like hoping and hollering. And that was just one of them nights, man. I just, you know, one of them nights, I'm 52, you know what I'm saying? That just one of them nights that, and I got several of them like that, but that one there was just one night that kind of, you know, it always left a real, you know, Spike Lee type of vision in my head. I guess, I guess because I was right there, man. Like I said, as soon as we walked behind this Beamer, we had just got, we were standing on the concrete medium waiting for the traffic to kind of clear on the other side so we could walk across. And thank God, when we shot a crawl, because once the shots went off, we ran a crawl. A car, car could have hit us and everything, I don't, you know, but for whatever reason, we didn't get hit by no car or nothing. But I just remember when the shots went off, we were right there behind the beam. A straight bullet, anything could have hit, hit, hit somebody, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. You know, like I said, I remember, man, once I ran across the street, I kind of looked back and I just seen two, that them same two dudes I noticed walking down the middle of the street and I know nobody else didn't you know I know I, I know I wasn't only one that noticed them and I just remember it, it, it happened so fast right? it was like as soon as I looked and saw them and I looked and I looked back again and them dudes was up on the Beamer man and they hit their joint up but again the driver didn't get hit he didn't get hit at all but the passenger man he got hit up bad he got hit up real bad you know, because I remember, like I said, I walked, once we had went down and I walked over to the car, you know, looking, you was crying, you know, people was out there, of course, I'm kind of looking, I just remember the, the patch, I'm seeing he had on like the black leather, black shiny leather, but the front of that joint was just, you know, blood is a different color on black. You know what I mean, lad? Like, you know what I mean? Like, not like red, but you, you see it on the on concrete or on a white sheet or something. You know, blood looks different on black. It looks almost like oil. You feel me? And I just remember, man, this, you know, this level was just like somebody just threw a, like a quarter oil 
on his level, man. I just remember his chest going up, coming down slow, and that shit like this. It just fucked with me, man. That shit left a hell of a stain on me, man. Like, damn, Slim just sat right there and died, man. Unbelievable. And just one of them crazy nights at the go man, you know? One of them crazy nights. And I seen a few murders. You know, I remember a few murders that happened at the Metro Club. A few murders. You know, real talk, you know? I remember one night just coming out, the club was letting out. And I guess this dude, it, this another night, the club was just letting out. We coming out, the police were already out there. They was they had blocked off like 